Forbes India presents Future Shift, powered by Qualys. Hello and welcome to Forbes India presents Future Shift, powered by Qualys. I'm your host, Paramita Chatterjee. Now we have with us today the global CEO of Qualys, Mr. Sumed Thakkar. And before we speak with Sumed, let's tell you a little bit about Qualys, the company, which is a pioneer and leading provider of cloud-based security and compliance solutions. It has more than 19,000 active customers across 130 countries. And basically, Qualys helps companies to streamline and consolidate their security and compliance solutions onto a single platform and build security as they undergo their digital transformation journey. Now, Qualys has had a long history as far as India is concerned uh, because it currently has about 700 uh, companies here in the country. And in fact, it's celebrating its 10th year anniversary uh, right here in Pune. And that's where Sumed Thakkar, the global CEO, is joining us from. Hi, Sumed. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. Thank you, Parenta. Thank you for having me. It must be said, it's not a company perhaps that is top of mind. It's not a company that many of us uh, as customers might have heard of. But it seems like you are performing some very mission critical uh, solutions uh, to companies across the world, which indirectly, uh, you know, touch people like you and uh, you and I. So tell us a little bit about Qualys and what its journey has been, particularly in the last two years, which has seen such a dramatic overhaul of uh, the digital transformation journey for most companies. I think uh, today we are living in a digital world. Uh, I think a lot of what we do is. Uh, changed dramatically, I would say, in the last five to ten years, and uh, all over the world, but even more so in countries here like India, where the, the digitization uh, and uh, the, the Digital India Initiative uh, is really driving um, the upliftment of uh, the social masses in ways. When you look at the uh, amazing cutting edge technology that has been developed around Aadhaar, UPI. Uh, and many other, you know, Rupe and many other uh, different areas today where uh, technology is being used in a way that uh, is causing financial inclusion for people that in the past were excluded from a lot of the, um, a lot of the social movement that was happening, the financial movement that was happening. So today technology, digital technology plays a crucial role in all of our lives and um, cybersecurity is there to ensure that we can continue to innovate on technology and adopt that because uh, if, with all this digital technology, if we don't have ways to secure this technology and don't have ways to secure the information and the financial information of the people who are using it, then people will stop using these digital technologies and uh, all the progress that we are seeing and all the promise that we have for the future led by uh, digitization uh, will not come to fruition. So I am very excited and proud of uh, being part of a industry, uh, cybersecurity, which is you know the background many times, uh, but ensuring that um, whether it's financial institutions uh, like our customers here, uh, which are the top banks uh, all over India, whether it's uh, uh, the infrastructure created by UIDAI for uh, for Aadhaar, uh, we're very proud of being part of securing a lot of different areas. Um, that are today empowering and fueling this uh, growth uh, trajectory that is uh, being pushed by digital transformation. Indeed, uh, and you've touched upon so many points. I mean, you're there uh, when it comes to Aadhaar, when it comes to the banking, financial services, and insurance space. So let's peel that off one by one, because perhaps the biggest worry that keeps most CISOs awake at night is you know, the threat of some sort of a cyber attack. And especially with most companies now having to migrate to the cloud, talking about some sort of a hybrid model, how do solutions such as yours really help protect companies or create that firewall to ensure all that data and their processes are safe? So, you know, as you look at what is happening with um, information technology, and you know, we talk a lot about cloud and digital transformation. It's not that IT has not existed in the past, but the movement into the cloud and containerization has given a, a whole new life for being able to move much, much faster than we used to in, in the past. And of course, that brings up questions around, you know, how do we do security in these new environments? But I actually look at it as a very positive movement overall for us uh, as a society because um, cloud uh, transformation, moving into the cloud and digital transformation, leveraging cloud, is giving a lot of enterprises an opportunity to redo their entire digital footprint 
uh, leveraging the latest technology and um, that allows everybody to create ways that they can secure themselves right from the beginning. In the past, uh, when information technology products were developed, security was not uh, on the mind of the people who were developing that. It was always sort of done as an after the fact uh, activity. Uh, today with digital transformation, with DevOps, DevSecOps, uh, some of these areas that everybody's focusing on is giving us an opportunity to do much better in terms of uh, securing ourselves. And um, you know, companies like Qualys, uh, what we really focus on is how do we leverage cloud-based technology that can bring scale uh, and how we can help our customers really ensure that they are uh, readying their defenses to ensure that they are able to protect themselves against uh, attackers and hackers out there who are continuously probing every uh, company out there, every bank, every government institution to try to find weaknesses so that they can exploit those weaknesses and, and create compromises. So uh, we build a lot of automation that helps uh, these organizations get the view of their environment well before a hacker can so that they can take preventative measures. And I think finally making, uh, as I said, all the CISOs have a, a, a nice restful night of sleep because that's clearly a very primary concern. Now, uh, you know, it's very interesting. You just mentioned, uh, you, you mentioned Aadhaar, you mentioned the banking space. And when I, where, when I was speaking to uh, some of your team members earlier and, uh, you know, they shared this line with me that there is a little bit of qualis in every Indian's life. I mean, elaborate that for us. Uh, when you speak about Aadhaar or when you speak about banks, for instance, whether it's private or public sector banks that uh, perhaps that I am banking with, uh, you know, what are the kind of processes? What's been the change that has come about? And, uh, you know, take us through uh, how Qualys is sort of connecting the dots when it comes to cybersecurity. Yeah, we feel very fortunate and blessed to be part of uh, helping um, these organizations, financial institutions, the banks, uh, uh, other uh, government organizations, as well as UIDI, Aadhaar, um, to to have technology that actually is helping them uh, protect uh, a lot of the information, a lot of these transactions in ways that they can prevent hackers from getting in there and um, giving them that visibility so that they can take care of that. So uh, I think because in the background, there's some, given that we are a dominant, um, or I should say an important part of cybersecurity program that a lot of these companies have, uh, and given the footprint that we have with large, uh, some of the largest private banks here uh, in India globally, as well as uh, a lot of the global technology companies that we use every single day on our laptops and our phones, uh, a lot of them are heavily leveraging Qualys uh, in the background to ensure that we are a key part of their uh, security program. And so today, wh whether you use your laptop, whether you use your banks, whether you use um, uh, your phones, a lot of these uh, organizations are leveraging Qualys in the background to protect uh, and prevent the attackers from coming to that. So that's why we feel very excited to to think that, you know, every day as you go through your day, some there is some Qualys uh, in every single thing that you do because we are helping uh, protect that digital transformation uh, from uh, our standpoint and the technology that we bring to the table. Uh, and I think that 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 that's really the the interesting part uh, for us. Wow, that that's uh, really fascinating. That uh, essentially every day, in some way or form, uh, uh, you know, some of the solutions provided by Qualys is actually helping keeping our data uh, safe. And you spoke a little bit about your journey here in India. And actually, uh, as I said, you're here celebrating your 10 year anniversary at your center uh, in Pune. And uh, take us through how that journey has been, because clearly you're, you're catering to an ever-growing market. Uh, so how has that journey been in terms of uh, growing your market, both internally uh, to service some of your clients' needs, as well as uh, externally for Qualys? And, uh, you know, how did it connect, for instance, with programs such as Skills India, which is looking at training more and more people in these areas because the demand is ever-growing? Yeah, it's been a great journey at Qualys, almost 20 years for me personally. I started as a software engineer and, uh, you know, as I've uh, been working through different areas in the company, uh, really was fortunate to have the opportunity to lead the company, take over as a CEO last year. And it's been an incredible journey. Uh, and we've always been on this mission of uh, creating innovation in cybersecurity that is helping bring multiple capabilities together. Today, it's a fragmented uh, market. And when you have fragmented solution sets, the cost of deploying technology always goes up. So 
the way you can bring down the cost of cybersecurity, which can then make uh, information technology even more accessible, is by innovating on creating single platforms where multiple security capabilities can be brought onto one. And that was our vision. We started with that many years ago. And uh, about 10 years ago, we, we really felt like for us to accelerate that uh, dream that we had, we needed access to a large pool of highly talented uh, people. And so uh, 10 years ago, we decided that that place was going to be Pune for us. Uh, so when we started there from very modest, humble beginnings of an office of 20 people, uh, we're very excited with the growth that we have had uh, the last 10 years. Uh, the teams here have created absolutely top-notch world-class technology uh, that is competing shoulder to shoulder with uh, the, the latest and greatest developments that are happening in technology. Whether it's uh, nine trillion data points that we host in Elasticsearch, or it's the millions of uh, um, transactions that we process on Kafka every single day. This technology is developed by our very sharp leaders and engineers out here in Pune. And because of that uh, innovation, it has helped us uh, spread our capabilities across more organizations and helping more uh, companies, more government organizations get better at cybersecurity. Uh, so that's really been an area. And this uh, week was our 10 year anniversary of being here in Pune. And I think more than just than the numbers or the count is, is the success of creating world-class technology from uh, here. What a journey it's been. And uh, uh, clearly you're growing from strength to strength, but you spoke about talent and that always uh, uh, makes a lot of tech companies, especially wince in pain because talent is perennially in shortage. But uh, it seems like you've played a quite a critical role when it comes to skilling the talent, um, especially when it comes to cybersecurity or when it comes to future CISOs for companies. Uh, take us through how you've been addressing, whether it's the talent shortfall or even in training fresh new talent to cater to some of these demands. Yeah, you know, I think as part of us growing here and, and being in Pune, you know, we, we also were able to learn a lot from uh, customers here in India, as, as uh, you talked about earlier, we have a lot of top banks, a lot of top organizations here, uh, leveraging Qualys for their server side, uh, even uh, work from home, their employees. We have a customer here that has uh, 3.5 million employees, and they use Qualys on each and every employee's laptop to protect and patch their systems. And so we learned a lot uh, from them in how we can do better and, and do more. And so that has uh, helped us grow our footprint, uh, obviously, here in yeah, uh, because we're so close to our customers. Uh, but as we have been growing, I think it is very important for uh, overall uh, knowledge, uh, uh, gaining overall empowerment of uh, the, the society if, uh, as a company, we want to do better. And so over the last uh, many years, we have provided a completely free uh, cybersecurity training um, to over a la one lakh uh, of people who have come to the Qualys platform and learned for absolutely no charge. And, how vulnerability management works, how patching works, how they can do things to secure themselves. So we're very proud of that as, as the government here is very focused on skilling the large population that we have so that they can really go and uh, uh, create technology and, and help uh, in many different ways. So the skills are important. And today we at Wallace, we provide free uh, cyber training, cyber security uh, knowledge uh, sharing. Uh, and uh, in addition, uh, in locally here, uh, the company has uh, partnered with the Leela Punawala Foundation. We have been very focused on women empowerment. Wallis today uh, provides uh, um, scholarships for uh, women engineering students so that we can create future women technologists uh, that will go ahead and uh, create uh, even more innovation and uh, really bring a new and different perspective uh, to cybersecurity. And Information technology in general. So, uh, you know, we do we do strongly believe and support and, and uh, focus on uh, just bringing more cybersecurity skills, training, and awareness because uh, cybersecurity is is critical to information technology and how everything today we do is information technology. And there is a massive shortage of uh, cyber talent overall. So, on one hand, we are helping our organizations by providing more and more innovation with automation in security. Uh, so that automation reduces the need for having too many skilled people. On the other hand, we continue to skill the uh, the, the people here so that they can actually go and take uh, and do more things that is going to help us protect the future 
from additional attacks that are going to come from uh, hackers and the bad actors and um, national nation state actors. Well, we always love uh, you know any initiative, and it seems like Wallace has really been working on the ground, whether it's providing free training for cybersecurity and especially the empowerment of women. Uh, uh, that's clearly a, a key focus area. In fact, uh, let's talk a little bit about real, you know, use case examples. And I'm talking about websites here like uh, uh, Mintra, Flipkart, Nike. I, I think uh, perhaps uh, not to take any names, but uh, I think many of them would be your clients. So how do you exactly secure these transactions? You know, because when I go on, I'm sharing my credit card details or my UPI details. Um, uh, you know, how do you ensure that all of these transactions are safe? So in general, for cybercrime, while there is a nation state component, the majority of the cybercrime is financially driven, right? And so the focus of these attackers really always is on where they can find opportunities that they can uh, get in uh, for free information about financial transactions, get access to credit cards, um, you know, or be able to go and, and pull money from accounts and uh, steal identities so they can go and do transactions on your behalf and get things delivered to them, right? So... Uh, it's it's an it's it's a business from their standpoint. It's an investment that they make when they have to go and uh, buy uh, information technology to start attacking things as well. Um, and so there is no one uh, silver bullet for cybersecurity. Uh, we always talk about this that security has to be in layers, and there are different uh, layers of defense that you have to put in place. Uh, and a lot of times, the easiest way for these organize for these uh, hackers to get into organizations is doing the most basic reconnaissance of looking for um, systems that have not been uh, updated, not been patched. You know, so a lot of times when we're using our laptops, we get those patching notifications. Uh, and these are well-known vulnerabilities and uh, everybody knows how to exploit them. So if organizations are leaving those open on their websites, then uh, hackers are able to go in and um, establish themselves in those systems and then start looking for additional ways to get into other systems and get into the databases, steal the data. Uh, so what we uh, work with organizations is how can we leverage speed to provide these organizations with a view and visibility into their infrastructure and any holes that they might have well before these attackers can see that so that the security teams and the IT teams in these organizations can take the right steps to ensure that they are uh, patching those holes, they are fixing those vulnerabilities so that um, it becomes harder for the attackers, right, to get in. And at the end of the day, the attackers are trying to find the easiest way. So if the defenses of these companies are stronger and have multiple layers and they make it too high of a cost for attackers to get into your organization, then they're not going to be interested because then the ROI is not there. If they have to spend uh, hundreds and thousands of dollars and lakhs of rupees to uh, get in and the return on that is very small, then right. it's not worth it. So the best you can do is what these organizations do and what Polis helps them is really uh, looking at their environment from how an hacker would look at and then very quickly go about remediating, fixing, and patching the most important issues that they have. So you're not just providing the security and securing the data. You also actually, it's a key component perhaps of cost saving as well for companies by uh, you know uh, going for these kind of solutions. Now, another real case example, you mentioned Aadhaar many times, and I think uh, there's nothing perhaps that leaves uh, more Indian citizens vulnerable than to have their Aadhaar data leaked. How are you ensuring uh, that uh, you know uh, that kind of data is kept secure? Yeah, I, I, mean, I think, uh, like I mentioned, it's the same uh, as every, every other organization, right? We are part of, we're proud to be part of the overall cyber stack that is being uh, leveraged and uh, we continue to provide uh, the right set of data that they can make decisions on to ensure that uh, they are able to stay ahead of any of these uh, potential issues that can come up. So we're proud to be part of the tool set that they leverage. And that's uh, nation critical data, so to speak. So that's clearly a very important role that you're uh, performing. Now, you know, moving forward, uh, it's been quite a journey, as you said, 20 years across the globe, across 130 countries, 700 clients and counting here in India. And you continue to, of course, grow that base. Uh, as you see technology evolving, especially with coming in a 5G and you've got so many new now uh, platforms on which, uh, you know, there are uh, that companies are operating and that impacts ultimately customers such as myself. So are we, you know, what happens now next in terms of a 
prediction, if you can share with us, because Qualysys was clearly ahead of the curve when it came to cybersecurity, you know, 10, 20 years ago. From here on, as you see these new technologies emerging and being used, is the world going to become more complex, more demanding, more challenging when it comes to addressing issues such as cybersecurity? I, I think that the uh, technology, as I mentioned, is going to be very critical for us in our future because today 5G is really going to change the game even more in terms of democratization of information and access to technology uh, at the right speed and in you know, potentially the future where you, you every mobile device comes completely connected to the internet all the time and you may not even need to have broadband plans in the future. Everything you do is connected and that, that's going to be a lot of... Uh, amazing capabilities that will bring uh, in our life. And so it's important uh, to, to do that. And the, the more that this is going to help uh, improve our life, the more people are going to leverage technology. And so cybersecurity is something that is going to be needed. And we are going to continue to focus on uh, making sure that uh, whatever new technology comes in play and with the talented team that we have built in play, uh, how we can continue to stay ahead on top of what is the latest technology that um, people are using to build new solutions uh, and work with them as we have done over the last many years, continuing to address newest technology that are coming in and finding ways to uh, make sure that we have capabilities that help secure uh, those technologies in a cost-effective way so that companies can continue to deploy technology. Clearly these uh, new uh, technology platforms and solutions and of course, uh, the advent of 5G is uh, going to throw up more opportunities. Now, Sumed, the you know, I should have congratulated you right at the outset at becoming the CEO of Qualys, as you said, last year. And it's been quite a journey for you as well. And clearly, India continues to play more and more of a prominent role. Qualys has got an Indian CEO and you are continuing to invest in your India center. So, you know, how do you see now India, India's role uh, and particularly your investments here in India sort of contributing and growing from here on when it comes to uh, the growth of Polis uh, overall? Do you see India becoming more and more important? For us, it's really about how we are driving innovation to help solve problems of the, the, the top companies globally and the world. And so we are very proud of the global footprint that we have and the customer base that we have across uh, every continent uh, and almost all the prominent countries. We have really great customers and we continue to focus on creating uh, advanced technology that is going to help uh, them uh, move faster and move forward in their digital transformation. And uh, uh, for us, our R&D uh, and our innovation team here in Pune continues to be the driving force for that side of our business where we are really creating the innovation uh, and which is enabling us to provide uh, speed in development of newest technology and access to talent pools that are helping us uh, bring on some of the top talent in the world uh, in a scalable way that we can uh, leverage to put them in the forefront. And today what is happening is that because of democratization of technology, everybody all over the world almost has the same access to all the technologies and the the disparity that used to be there 20, 30 years ago is not there, which means that uh, the talent that we find here uh, and uh, some of our other locations continues to have access to very similar technology to continue to leverage that for um, innovating. So for us, uh, we continue to look forward, attract more talent, uh, people who really want to contribute you know, to innovation in cybersecurity so that we can uh, do what we are doing right now and enable businesses all over the world to protect themselves from uh, hackers and attackers uh, and, and just overall make the world a safer place and make our digital world a safer place as we move forward. Indeed. And uh, just a final word, if I may end on a personal note, since you left India's shows, I mean, uh, of course, you've been coming back, but uh, in terms of as a professional almost two decades ago, um, now as we talk about celebrating the 10-year anniversary in Pune, what do you envision or what do you what would you like to see, uh, especially for India, given your strong CSR focus and your uh, you know strong bench towards really helping the underprivileged here in our country? We have just celebrated 75 years of our independence. Uh, you know, what would be your sort of message to our viewers and what would you like to see India shaping up to be, particularly whether it's in the technology world or in the non-tech world? 
I think India is already do, you know far ahead in many ways uh, when you look at the payment systems and some of the latest innovation that has come into play when you look you look at Aadhaar and Pay and many other capabilities and so uh, I think the talent here is continuing to solve challenges that they feel and we leverage technology uh, to solve those challenges and uh, you know we are very happy to uh, do our part however we can to help so whether it's our uh, initiatives around um, you know, we just recently planted like a thousand trees to help the environment or whether it's supporting uh, women students in technology or it's it's free training so we can skill uh, the people uh, that the community here uh, around where we are uh, based out of we're going to continue that i think the amazing asset here is the large population that uh, is available a very young population and the more the, that population gets skilled. It not only creates a great uh, base for um, a large set of consumers, um, but it also creates a great place for a large set of people who can really contribute to many different areas of life, many different businesses uh, in, in many different ways. And so I think uh, what we see uh, where the country is going is a great direction and a bit a small part and we continue to uh, we will continue to track the koala story and the larger and ever larger role that it will be playing uh, both in skilling india as well as securing india from some of those uh, uh, cyber attacks thank you so much sumit thakkar thank you for sparing the time all the very best we wish koalas as well as yourself all the very best thank you for joining us on this special show thank you very much it was my pleasure Forbes India presents Future Shift, powered by Qualys.